This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Church in Southport, Connecticut, to our chapel for this service of morning prayer. Today is Thursday, May 28th, and today in our church calendar, we remember John Calvin. My name is Peggy Hodgkins. I'm the rector here at Trinity, and I welcome you to this time of prayer and reflection and such a joy to worship with you. Who was John Calvin? John Calvin was the premier theologian and leader of the Reformed wing of the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s. He was born in France in 1509 and reared in a devout Roman Catholic family. He excelled at his studies. And by the age of 19, he had earned a, mas he had earned a master's degree his father wanted him to study law, which he did for a time, but Calvin's own passions were theology, languages, rhetoric, and the literary sciences. Around 1534, when he was 25 years old, he underwent a major conversion experience, left the Roman church, and devoted the rest of his life to the evangelical cause of the Protestant Reformation. Calvin's greatest work is The Institutes of the Christian Religion, first published in 1536, but repeatedly updated and revised until its final edition in 1559. Unlike Luther and Zwingli, whose theological writings were situational in the sense of addressing particular conflicts, Luther and Zwingli were also reformers, Calvin's Institute were a more systematic treatment of the whole of Reformed evangelical theology. By taking up his reforming theology 15 years after Luther and Zwingli, Calvin was able to write in a more reflective and considered mode, beyond the crossfire and immediacy of the early years of the Reformation. Standard themes in Reformed theology, the sovereignty of God, election and predestination, the true nature of the Christian life, and the proper understanding of the authority of Scripture, even now bear strong Calvinist qualities. The Institutes continue to be an accessible window into the Reformed theology of the 16th century. Calvin was also interested in theological principles controlling the civil state by imposing moral discipline on the people. His efforts in Geneva to establish such a theocratic moral code enjoyed periods of modest success, but were also met with resistance. Positively, Calvin's theocratic principles of public life led to the creation of hospitals, care for the poor, orphans, widows, and the infirm, provisions for better sanitation, and the creation of new industries to employ the people. Calvin's Geneva was also a safe haven for John Knox and other Protestants of the Reformed tradition during times of unrest and exile. Calvin died in Geneva on May 27, 1564. And so we remember the, the Protestant reformer, John Calvin. Morning Prayer begins on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer, or you can follow along online, bcponline.org, page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ the Lord has ascended into heaven. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Let us say together the Venite on page 82. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, 
and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Alleluia, Christ the Lord has ascended into heaven. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 105, verses 1 to 22. 105, part 1. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength, continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God, his judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he swore with Abraham, the oath that he made to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan, to be your allotted inheritance, when they were few in number of little account and sojourners in the land, wandering from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another, he let no one oppress them and rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our first lesson today is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 32. reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Now this I affirm and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to the hardness of heart. They have become callous, and have given themselves up to licentiousness, greedy to practice every kind of uncleanness. You did not so learn Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. Put off your old nature, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new nature, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away falsehood, let everyone speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. 
Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his hands, so that he may be able to give to those in need. <clears throat> let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for edifying, as fits the occasion, that it may impart grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, in whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the Magnificat, Canticle 15 on page 91. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, verses 1 to 8. Getting into a boat, Jesus crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, they brought him a paralytic lying on his bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven? or to say, rise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, rise, take up your bed, and go home. And the man rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we have Jesus' wisdom balancing out what is more, more important to say to someone um, that little thing you're doing is wrong or to bless them with some great miracle. What, what would be more important? to critique some uh, job or tittle of the law, or to uh, heal someone fully who could not walk, and now could get up and go home. Sometimes um, we have to be generous in our outlook and try to weigh what is the greater good. It's a matter of ethics, really. In olden times, people thought that they were sick uh, because they had done something wrong against God. And it is true in a sense that we are all one person, body, mind, spirit. And if there's something wrong with our spirit, or if we're troubled by something, it can often take, a, take um, it can
can often be revealed in our bodies. But, um, but Jesus uh, came just to sort of straighten people out. He said, you know, it's not because of what you did wrong uh, that you are ill. You know, your sins are forgiven. He had the power to forgive um, so that their spirits were healed. And then he also, just to prove that he is the Son of God, was able to, to help people heal physically as well. So it is all connected, our, our hearts, our minds, our bodies. Um, but we have to, we have to uh, see how Jesus has the power to forgive, which is even more important probably than our physical healing. Let us say together now the Song of Simeon on page 93. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Turning to the prayers on page 97, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, to all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the seventh week of Easter after Ascension Day. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. And let us pray the prayer for John Calvin today. O sovereign and holy God, you brought John Calvin from a study of legal systems to understand the godliness of your divine laws as revealed in Scripture. Fill us with a like seal to reach and preach your word, that the whole world may come to know your Son, Jesus Christ, the true word and wisdom, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen.
a collect for guidance. Heavenly One, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Now I invite your prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who suffer from grief or despair, from sickness. We pray for those who have cancer, that you might give them your healing, Lord. We pray for those who have suffered from the coronavirus. We pray for the dying. We pray that you might surround them all with your never-failing care and love. Give your healing in mind and body and spirit. We pray for doctors and nurses and staff of hospitals, health care centers. We pray for caregivers that God may give them all the skill and sympathy and resilience they need as they care for the sick. Give them endurance, O oh Lord. Give them wisdom, especially to those searching for a cure or a vaccine. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work, many will be restored to health. We pray for all those who are lonely or isolated, especially in this time of the pandemic, that you would be close to them, especially those who are afraid or in isolation. Raise up for them family and friends and let them know that you are always with them. And for all who are facing financial hardship, we please, we ask that you would not forget them, nor the poor. Give them hope and courage. Give them the resources they need and draw friends and family close to them in this time of uncertainty. We pray for our church and its leaders, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, and for Ian Douglas and Laura Ahrens, our bishops. And we pray for this parish of Trinity Church in Southport, Connecticut. We pray that you would draw us closer to one another in kindness and love and in justice. We pray for those on our prayer list. Kendall Crowley's recovering from surgery, Margie Fowler, Quinn Stoner, son of Judy Stoner, Todd, Joy Shaw, Peter Swan, Robert, Paul Suchland, Adam DiVinere, Lisa Fabrini, <clears throat> Drew Lipner, Kathy, Steve Madison, Jimmy Stanek, John, Claudia, Sean Sullivan, Lucy, Janet, Tom, Yolanda, Meredith, and Debbie. And any others we may now name silently or aloud. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, what we have asked faithfully, may you grant effectually through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I invite us into a couple of minutes of silence to open our hearts to 
what God is saying to us. Let us pray together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Thanks be to God. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I want to invite you all to our Pentecost service this Sunday for the Feast of Pentecost, which is the coming of the Holy Spirit. It's a joyful feast day in the life of the church. Um, and also let you know that evening prayer will end this week, but we'll continue with morning prayer every day at 730. So thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day ahead. God bless.